Hello and welcome to this episode of Cloudbytes TV, where once again it's all about helping you be the best Salesforce admin, developer or architect that you can be. We're going to continue our introduction to Apex series today with another lesson, another quick lesson, these little bytes for us to work with in building up our knowledge of how we work with Apex. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about declaring variables within Apex. So let's start off by talking about what a variable actually is. So a variable is a placeholder for some data that can be changed and manipulated by our application or our program. So for those who've done algebra in school, you'll probably be familiar with the idea of a variable such as x. And we might have an equation where we have, say, 5x equals 10, and then we figure out that x equals 2. You'll also likely have seen functions, so things like f of x, which will define a graph. And in that case, x changes and we have some formula, so for example, f of x equals 2x, such that when we change the value of x, it then changes the output. And that's all that a variable is as well in programming. It is some placeholder for some data, some value that we want to store, and it allows us to store this data and pass it around the system for us to work with throughout our program. So it's really, really simple and easy for us to work with. It means that instead of having to retrieve data each time from the database, we can just get that data and store it and work with it in memory. It also means that we can come up with sort of generic data we want to use. So for example, if we wanted to calculate a total in code for us to be using elsewhere, we can just do that. We don't have to define it somewhere on the database, okay? We also mentioned in our first video, I think it was, that Apex is a strongly typed language. And because Apex is a strongly typed language, all of our variables, all of the data we work with within our Apex code has to have a type. So how do we go about defining a variable and assigning a type to it? In order to do that, we have a generic way of defining variables. So that is we use the data type so that might be something like a string or an integer. We'll see some different data types in a minute. We will give our variable a name, and that will go in the place of variable name here. And then we'll use the equal sign to assign it some value. So for example, we could assign an integer the value 5. Okay, so let's just have a look at some examples, in fact. If I wanted to create a string that was holding my name, I would give it the data type of string. I would give the variable name my name, and then I would assign it the value Paul Batterson. So that's in single quotes after the equal sign. If I wanted to define an integer, which would be my height, then I could say integer my height. So it's data type is integer, the variable name is my height, and the value here is 183. And then finally, if I wanted to have a true or false, that's a Boolean data type. And so I can have a variable that has the data type Boolean. The name of that variable is, is developer. And I would assign it the value true because I am a developer. These are just some simple examples of how we can define variables within the system, but notice that they follow that standard pattern. There is a data type, there is a variable name, and then we're assigning it a particular value. You don't always have to assign the value, and we could remove the equals and then the value and just end with a semicolon. But one thing we do have to do is always finish with a semicolon. That's one of the ways in which Apex works. We have to end every line with a semicolon. So I've shown you some different data types here, but typically when you're looking at these, these are all examples of primitive data types. Okay? Primitive data types are the base data types that Salesforce provides us. Um, and Salesforce provides a lot of primitives. It then provides something called collections, which we'll deal with in a later video. And it also allows us to create custom types and also work with their subject types. But that's all to come. We'll deal with that later on. Just know what the primitives are here. So let's talk through the different primitives. There's blob, which is some sort of kind of binary data. So think the value of a PDF file. That would be a blob. Booleans, we've already seen they're true or false. We have a date, which is a date. So, for example, the 4th of April. We have a date time, which is a particular date and a particular timestamp. So the 12th of April at midday. We have a decimal and we have a double. Both of those are numbers that are floating. So they have values after the decimal point. The difference being is that decimal is used when we're working with currencies and double is more generic. We have the ID primitive, that is an 18 or 15 character ID that Salesforce works with, so that's our record IDs. We have integers, so those are whole numbers. We have longs, 
which are very large numbers. We have the generic object type. Now, Salesforce is an object-oriented language, and all of these primitives inherit from this generic object type. So all of these can just be a generic object if we want to work with that. Again, further on in different videos, we can see how we're working with this, especially when it comes to working with JSON. But just know that object is a primitive, but you're unlikely to be using it in most situations. We have string, which is a bunch of text, and then finally time, which is just a timestamp. So for example, 10 past five, okay? So those are the different primitive data types we can work with. And what we can do is we can assign any of our different variables that data type to work with. So let's have a quick recap now on how we define variables. First of all, we have the data type, because Apex is a strongly typed language. We have the name of the variable, and then we have a value we're assigning to it. And we always finish with a semicolon. We also had a look through some of the primitive data types, blobs, booleans, so on and so forth. These are the data types that Salesforce provide for us out of the box that we can use to quickly assign to our variables, and we'll cover most different data we'll be working with. Hope you found this useful. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to keep up with this series, remember to hit subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.